those burning questions that everybody asks that I seem to never have time to address, that's what we're doing today. Hello everybody and welcome to Sutton's Days. If you're new here, my name is Lisa and we are all about pantry preparedness. And today I'm going to go over some frequently asked questions. Um, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Come bake some bread with me. I'm still working my way through uh, the zucchini crop from this past summer. And so today we're going to make some chocolate zucchini hazelnut bread. This is amazing. I'm not kidding. You're going to want to do this, okay? So first I had my hazelnuts and I put them in the oven and I roasted them and they are mm, so, so good. But look at, look at, look at, look at. I got something to share with you. Did you all get the text? I got the text. Yes, I did. You know I got the text. And so, I got a box in the mail. And, try to do this without cutting off my fingers. Okay, so first, <laughs> look at those cute little four jars key rings. I mean, seriously, just, just so cute. But four jars came out with Measuring cups and spoons. Yes, they did. I'm opening these right along with you guys. So we're going to take a peek. Yes, we are. Because I'm a firm believer you can never have enough measuring cups and spoons. Oh, I love it. An eighth of a cup. You know, you almost never get that eighth of a cup. And then there's a quarter. And then there's a third. And then there's a half. And then there's one. You almost never get the eighth of a cup. You know, an eighth of a cup is two tablespoons, my friends. Yes, it is. And I use I use that a lot. I use the eighth of a cup a lot. These, these have some weight to them. They're nice and sturdy. These are going to get used a lot. Yes, they are. Awesome. Okay, so we've got those. And then, whoop, there you go. They have the measuring spoons. And again, you can never have enough. What do we have? We have a quarter teaspoon, a half a teaspoon, one teaspoon, half a tablespoon, and a tablespoon. Look at look at that. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So there's a link down below right to this. And if you use the code SETTENCE10, you get 10% off. These, I like this. This is nice quality. Okay, i got to stick those in the dishwasher. And then you know i got to put four jars on my key ring. Yes, I do. This is, oh, it's so cute. Okay, look at that. It's so cute. You know what I love? Because you guys know I have been, I have been talking about four jars for a while now. Um, and the fact that I, uh, I, get, I get, you know, a little hyped up about them because they were here for us. They were here for us when nobody else was. At the right price point, they weren't trying to gouge us. They gave us a super, super quality product. They continue to do so. These are nice, and they look so pretty. Um, and so I really, I don't want that other company, you know, on my on my stuff. Um, and I've gone out of my way to replace most of that other company on my stuff. And so I love that they're coming out with stuff that's four jars because I'm all about canning. I'm all about preserving. I'm all about the kitchen, and this is awesome. Okay, while we're waiting for the rest of that, let's talk about these. I've had a lot of people say, what are those? What are those things that you put your jars on? Back in the day, I, <laughs> I had an idea. I had, this, I had this idea to build a dining room table. Back when we were doing the big family dinners, you know, I was going to build a dining room table, and I was going to inset these into the top of the table for built-in trivets, you know, for the, because it was always a big meal. We were feeding 10. And so um, I found these on eBay and had them mailed to me. And then they sat in the box, they sat in the box, and life happened. And after my mom passed and, the you know, the grandkids got older, um, it's just not everybody's schedule meshes and the family dinners just don't happen anymore to the extent that mm, we got rid of the big table uh, because it took up a lot of room for something that we were never using. But I still wanted these and I'm like, what can I make out of these? What can I make out of these? And so I decided to make trivets out of them because, I mean, they're cast iron, right? These are the old heat register vent, you know, that they used to have in the old houses. They have some really intricate ones. I'm not kidding. I'm working on staying out of eBay to make more. However, then I went on and I got uh, some, what are they? Drawer pulls. Thank you. 
and I used drawer pulls for the legs. Now you can tell I didn't do anything with the bottom. Um, I did do a coat of uh, a nice heat resistant spray paint on the top, um, but it's wearing off on where the screws are. So I need to find some black screws. But uh, yeah, just put those on right where the holes were. And I have, and they're not going to mess up my counter. You know, they keep everything off the counter. They're really, I, they're actually kind of cool. I like them. I like them a lot. And it made use of something that I had in the house. And they're different. And, you know, sometimes you just want something not everybody else has, right? So, yeah, those are my fun trivets. So that's FAQ number one. One of the questions that I got was, how do you do everything that you do? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it all done to my desire, my uh, level of, yeah, my goals, you know. I do what I can when I can, and I try not to stress about the rest of it. I really try not to stress about the rest of it. We will never have enough time to do everything, but I did make a very conscious effort in the last few years to make some lifestyle changes so that I could do the things that I thought were important so that I could spend time with the people that I thought were important more than spending time doing things that, you know, were quite honestly draining the life out of me. So you have to make those choices and you have to give up, you know, there's certain things you have to give up or you have to come to terms with what you're going to do. I had to go buy eggs because my girls are on strike. So how do I how do I have time to do all the things? I you know the the truth of the matter is I don't. I will never have time to do all the things that I want to do. I am one shoot, that was an egg. I am one person. I can only do so much, and I will not beat myself up over what I can't do, and I work really hard to not compare myself with any, anyone else. Somebody asked, uh, somebody else asked, what was, uh, what's my, what's my dream vacation spot? My dream vacation spot is Ireland. I am not somebody that goes on vacations. I am somebody that full, fully believes that we should be creating a life that we don't need a vacation from. And so that is what I have been doing. Um, but you know, if I could go any place, which right now I can't because I have animals. So probably, I don't know, in four years or so, uh, I will be working towards making a trip to Ireland because that's the dream. On that note, did Phil ever get his donkey? No. And we made the decision uh, after giving it some serious thought, that we were not going to do the donkey route. Um, Phil is seven years older than I am. He's going to be 65 next month. And quite honestly, um, every day that he's above ground is a miracle. And so we decided that we're going to focus more um, on other things and try not to tie ourselves down to taking care of an animal that will probably outlive us. So, no, no donkey. We will just have to live vicariously through other people. Somebody else said, what's your favorite genre of music? I don't have one. I do not have a favorite genre of music. Um, I listen to everything. Right now, I am absolutely head over heels in love with Teddy Swims. And so I'm listening to a lot of Teddy Swims right now. Uh, but... I don't really have a favorite. This one was fun. She says, what fun hobby do you have that has nothing to do with YouTube, reading, gardening, canning, or preparing? That's what I do. Someone wanted to know about my shroom dealer. <laughs> um, there's, no big, there's no big secret to my shroom dealer, you guys. Um, any place that you can get... Uh, mushrooms bulk. What I don't want to do is I don't want to go someplace and buy a case of mushrooms that I then have to uh, take out of, you know, uh, 10 or 20 um, plastic containers with plastic wrap and, you know, all of that stuff. I, I don't want that. I try to be cognizant of what is, you know, going on. And so um, I go to the farmer's market and there is a 
vendor there um, who sells me cases of mushrooms. Um, they are not what I'd call a great deal. They're average at best. And there are times when you all are beating me out hardcore for the cost. Uh, but I can get them in one big box and I don't have to mess with it. How long have Phil and I been married? Um, Phil and I were married in September of 2009. Uh, we were together a year before that. Uh, I wanted him to be certain because <laughs> we had only been dating a few months. And I told him, I said, I'm not doing this again. So, um, you know, I'm going to make you wait a year and a day. And if you still want to do it, then we will get married. And so we did. Uh, we got married at 4 a.m. on the shores of Lake Huron underneath a full moon. And uh, we did it at 4 a.m. because I didn't want a big wedding. I was actually remarkably nervous at the uh, reception that we hosted later on that afternoon. I don't like crowds. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not somebody who does well with crowds. Uh, but it was, uh, it was good. It was perfect for us. It's just what we wanted. Um, it leaked out uh, what time we were getting married, and so we still ended up with about 30 people there. Um, my oldest and dearest friend, uh, we have known each other since we were nine years old, uh, is ordained, and so she came up, and she's the one that married us, and the rest is history. I'm going to try to do this where I don't lose count. Um, a very frequent question lately is... Why did you do that to your hair? Okay. I've also had some not so nice comments because some people are just not nice. Um, but the reason I did this to my hair is because I have wanted to do this to my hair for over a decade. And that was enough reason for me. I am not put on this earth to live my life the way somebody else thinks I should, or based on somebody else's opinions. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to do it. I did it. If I don't like it, I have wasted more money on dumber stuff, you know? Um, problem is, <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I have super fine, thin hair, and uh, it is just something that I have always wanted. So, I, I think it's great. And anybody else's opinion is seriously none of my business. Somebody wanted to know what my favorite dessert is. All of them. Yeah. All of them. I love them all. This doesn't come out real easy. Okay. Um, I have always been particularly fond of cheesecake. Uh, but basically, yeah, if it's a dessert... I'm pretty much going to fall in love with it. Um, I don't eat them anymore. And quite honestly, I don't miss them. What I do miss, <laughs> to some extent, is I do miss uh, the convenience and easiness of eating bread. Yeah. But uh, my stomach no longer really tolerates a whole bunch of bread, so I'm finding different ways to kind of get the same thing. I tried um, gluten-free bread, uh, gluten-free bagels, carbonate gluten-free bagels. I won't be buying them again um, because what a disappointment. <laughs> um, you know, if, if you have no choice, if you have no alternative, alternative, if you're gluten sensitive, then yeah, I'm not gluten sensitive. I just have a five, five ounce stomach or yeah, five ounce stomach. So um, that leads me into the other most frequently asked question. What diet are you on, Lisa? I am on the amputate 80% of your stomach diet. So um, I had a conversation with my doctor a few years ago, and she looked at me very, very seriously, and she says, if you don't do something, you're not going to see 73. I have a to-do list like nobody's business. So um, I said, okay. I have tried everything, and if you've been with me, you know, for a really long time, then you know I've, I've tried a lot of stuff, uh, but none of it was sustainable. So I made the decision, I did the research, and I decided to have uh, bariatric surgery. 
vertical sleeve gastrectomy um, where they amputate 80% of your stomach. It is life altering. Uh, it will always be that way. Um, is it a guaranteed success? No. Is it easy? Oh, heck no. Um, and I'm not even talking about the surgery and the healing. I'm talking about you have to be on your game. You have to watch every single thing that you put into your mouth. I have lost 70 pounds. Um, I have approximately 30 more that I would like to lose. Um, I got hung up at one point uh, this fall because my back kept going out and I couldn't figure out why. And I had just started working out again and uh, they're supposed to work out sooner than that. But as most, you know, some of you know, um, Phil injured himself this summer. So I was a little busy. So I was busy in the garden. I was busy in the yard. I was busy with the animals. I was busy doing all the do. And I figured that was exercise. I was good. But then uh, the season ended, you know, and so after a few weeks, I kind of went, no, I got to go work out. I got to, I got to go work out. I love cardio drumming. If you don't know what it is, Google it. It's so much ridiculous fun for any age group. Um, but I started cardio drumming and I really enjoyed the teacher and she was putting core exercises in along with the cardio drumming, which I thought was great. That's what I wanted to work on. And, uh, my back kept going out. And I mean, you guys have seen me if you've done a live with me or something, or you saw how I wrecked my back trying to do the apples, uh, this fall. I couldn't, I, I can't breathe. Literally the only time I'm not in excruciating pain is when I am laying down in bed. Um, and that's no way to live. And I'm like, I did not do all of this hard work to do this. Come on. So um, we've got a couple different things going. And my doctor said, okay, let's do some physical therapy. I'm not a huge fan of physical therapy. I'm really not. And I'm not a huge fan of paying $1,000 for somebody to teach me like a handful of exercises. It, it, yeah. Anyway, um, so I started doing physical therapy. And uh, we figured out, yeah, that um, I, during the course of the weight loss, lost most of my core muscles. And so that is what was causing my back to go out. Um, that and uh, I'm a little top heavy, you know. So um, I've got an appointment to see somebody about the top heaviness. Uh, jury's out, I don't know. But um, so now I'm working on core exercises. So wall Pilates, um, the exercises that the physical therapist gave me, um, I'll be doing those and I'll be ramping those up. I also um, got a stationary bike that I hate and I got a uh, treadmill that's supposed to be for like, you know, under your desk, only the dogs are under my desk. So um, I just pull it in and out from underneath the bed and I walk on that until I can walk down my driveway without fear of disappearing in the mud puddle and not being found again till spring. So, um, once spring comes like last, last summer and spring, I was walking. I love it. I, I mean, I don't love walking for the sake of walking. It drives me nuts, but I put in my headphones and I'm like the day that I walked five miles, I was so happy. I was so happy. So while I don't enjoy walking, I enjoy being able to walk, you know? So, um, you have to find what works for you. That's what worked for me. And uh, can you absolutely gain the weight back? You absolutely can gain the weight back. Um, it's my intent not to do so. I did not go through all of that to gain the weight back. So um, just, I could, I, could, I could join a gym, but then I would actually have to go to it. And that's probably not likely to happen. Why did I start a YouTube channel? Because it's fun. I mean, seriously, that was it. That was the only reason. I have been a huge uh, fan of social media since it came out. I, have, I just love it. I am lucky enough to be part of that generation that was here before computers and has been here throughout the growth and continuation of computers. And I love it. So um, I just, I thought it would be fun. It took me a while to figure out exactly what I wanted to do with it. And I'm here. So yeah, it's a good time. I was so busy answering questions, I forgot. I don't need the hook. I need the paddle. <sighs> Sometimes it does not pay to try to walk and chew gum. It really doesn't. Okay. There are times when you just have to measure with your heart, you know? Chocolate's one of them. Marta asked if I um, were offered the opportunity 
to run a fully funded, where was that? Opportunity to run a fully funded canning research and testing unit near your home. Would you want to do it? I would do everything that I could to support them. Whoop, put those back up. And, uh, you know, but would I, would, would I personally be on hand? I think I might be detrimental. Um, but I would definitely, I would definitely help as many ways as I could without turning it into a full-time job. This is gonna be amazing. Okay, I just woke up today and felt like baking. Everyone should be very afraid when that happens. So, one, two, three, maybe. Maybe six loaves. There we go. What is the biggest lesson I've learned this week? Do not buy cheap aluminum foil. Don't do it. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money, even if it's just a little bit of money. Okay, getting ready to put it in the oven. Eggs are a wonderful source of protein. And, 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 and. They're not that difficult. <clears throat> so, people tend to make things harder than they need to be. Um, I have a dozen and a half hard boiled eggs that I made up because they're an easy grab and go protein for me and I have to focus heavily on protein. Um, and we are now getting Phil to the point where he is doing more protein, but we're still putting in a fair mix of carbs for him, just not as much as used to be, you know? So today I felt like egg salad. So what do you do when you have to focus high on the protein? Because I'm getting a lot of questions about that, and I would love to take you guys along for, like, what I make every week, but uh, I don't know if I can pull that off. So I'll just randomly throw a few things in here. Like today, um, we are having egg salad for lunch, and then uh, I'm doing a pepper jack chicken for dinner. So... I will be doing that. And I'm just getting ahead of a question, just in case, how I make <clears throat> hard-boiled eggs, whether they are farm fresh or not. I bring a pot of water up to a full boil, a rolling boil, like if you're making jam, right? And then I put the eggs in, and then I set the timer for 18 minutes. And as soon as that timer is done, I take the pot and I put it over in the sink and I put a whole bunch of ice on top of it with cold water. Super easy. Now, the fun part about this is that I weigh and measure literally everything that I put into my face. So, um, I don't make a big thing of egg salad. I make little things of egg salad. <laughs> then, that way I know exactly what is in there. Uh, if, if I'm making it just for fill, then I don't have to weigh and measure at all, you know. And it, it's difficult because I'm kind of a, 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 you know, measure with your heart kind of gal, but... <clears throat> what are you going to do? I can roughly figure out a tablespoon or two. Whether I can get it out of the container is another thing altogether. So I was asked what I do besides cook and garden and can and preserve and work on the pantry. And I do a lot of reading. Um, I am constantly trying to learn new things. And I'm getting ready for the warmer weather, the gardening season. So I'm doing some research on some different stuff. Uh, different things that I'm going to plant that I normally uh, have never planted before. That's really, that's what I do. I found these the other day at Walmart. So they've got, uh, there's six of them, I think. Yeah, six of them in the container. But I think the net carbs on these are pretty darn low. Yes, I do. And you could, oh, look at that. You could make a sandwich. Aha, uh -huh. happy Lisa. Four net carbs, 100 calories. There we go. I probably won't be able to eat both of them. Okay, while the bread is cooling, I am going to prep dinner because the oven's already heated, so I might as well. How do you like that seal? I might as well um, get dinner prepped. And then it is one less thing I have to do. Look at that. That is, that is pinholing. So there's nothing wrong with it, you guys. It's normal. 
part of the thing. Okay, so we're going to take all that juice from the chicken and we're going to put it into a little pan. This is dinner for two and lunch. Okay, so I put some freeze dried mushrooms in there. That's going to soak up all that wonderful liquid. And then the jar of chicken. Remember, it doesn't have to be difficult. It just has to taste good, okay? So I put the mushrooms on the bottom specifically so that they would soak up all of that liquid. Those yummy chicken juices, right? And I'm going to take that chicken and shred it up in the pan because I don't really want any big chunks of it, okay? And it will all come apart anyway. There we go. And next... We're going to take just a little bit of granulated garlic, because garlic's good. And then we're going to take cumin, cumin, and we're going to sprinkle some cumin in there too. Measure with your heart, my friends, measure with your heart. Okay, next, I'm still using up bell peppers from this summer, so I'm going to add a few probably half a cup-ish of bell peppers in there. And because they're frozen, they've got the ice in there. That's all good. Okay. And then onions. Just going to throw some freeze-dried onion on there. Again, if you're using fresh onion, measure with your heart. Think about one, one medium onion. And then I have this brick of brick that I have to vacuum seal. I haven't gotten to it yet. Of pepper jack cheese. Yeah, got this from Azure. Okay, so we're going to use about that much of it. This is going to be dinner for the two of us, and most likely a little dish left over for lunch. Okay, so now that we've got all of that in there, now I'm going to slice up this delicious pepper jack cheese. You can shred it if you want. Honestly, I'm not pulling out one more thing to wash. Between the bread and everything else, I'm, I'm kind of... I've got the, the dishwasher full. I'm good. So, next... Okay, we're just going to layer that cheese over the top. Because, well, you know that it's going to melt all throughout the entire thing. There we go. Okay. There we go. Poof! Just like that. Now, I don't want to dirty another baking pan, so I'm going to get this bread out of here. Let it cool off on a cooling rack, and then I can have that baking sheet just as extra added protection, you know? underneath my little dish. Yes, I do reuse these foil pans. I do, I do. These are just, these smell so good. The espresso powder in there just takes it up a whole nother level. Yes, it does. As soon as these cool down, I think I'm going to have Phil take me for a little ride and I'll just drop them off all around town. To our friends, I have gotten the baking bug out of my system and used up the hazelnuts because I don't want them to go bad, but I mean, <laughs> okay, we're just going to take this just because I have no faith in uh, spillage, you know, and I hate cleaning the oven. That literally needs to go in for like 15, 20 minutes, just long enough to melt all that yummy cheese, kind of heat up those peppers and everything. <clears throat> oh my gosh, that smells amazing. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. So that is pre-cooked now. I'm gonna throw a piece of foil over the top of it and when we get ready to have dinner, I'll just heat it up and we're good to go. Phil's gonna have spinach with it. I'm just gonna have this, um, but mm, that smells delicious. Phil is filling the wood box and that is that is my day in a nutshell. I answered a few questions that have been asked and brought you guys along for the bread, 
and for dinner. The recipe for both of those are linked down below. Until next time, everybody, be safe.